Hello everyone, welcome back to another 2v2 Warhammer battle. This is going to be Britonia and the Greenskins versus the Vampire Counts and Britonia. A lot of Britonia here. For our army, we'll start with our ally here. We have an upgraded peasant army. You can see all these gold chevrons, an upgraded peasant army with men-at-arms. Mixture here, peasant bowmen, I think just normal ones. Uh, we also have two battle programs upgraded, the Green Knight, Albrecht de Portolo, and the six upgraded mounted yeomen. Let me say that one more time. Six upgraded mounted yeomen. Every single word of that sentence to put together is just wrong. I'm just going to put that out there right now. Don't. Don't. Just don't. You know, just as a carryover, why? Or more appropriately, WT to the F to the exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Why? Would you do that? Um, anyway, back uh, over here for my army, Greenskins, we have a front line of a mixture of Orc Biggins and then uh, Savage Orc Biggins here in a row. We got three of each. We have two slightly upgraded Goblins to hold on a little bit longer. Um, we have three Orc Poor Boy Biggins with the Orc Shaman and the Orc War Boss. It's kind of like that super crew. I also brought a Orc Giant and then three Trolls as well. And then a Goblin Archer and a Goblin Archer of uh, Durusty Errors. Then back here for the enemy army, we have two Hex Wraiths. And the rest of the vampire counts are going to be over here. We have a Vargeist, a Dire Bat, or sorry, Fell Bat. Uh, then we have two Blood Knights in here. We have a mixture of Grave Guard and Crypt Ghouls, Vlad von Karstein, and a Viking. Then the rest of them is just going to be much of Skeletal Warriors, and then a Puppy. Then over here for the Bretonians, we have Peasant Bowmen, two Foot Squires, I think, yeah. Two Foot Squires, Men at Arms, a couple of them with Halberds, and we have a line of. Um, Battle programs that have also been kind of slightly upgraded. Then in the middle, we got the Fey Enchantress, Paladin, and a Grail Relique as kind of like a hero squad. We also have a group of Pegasus Knights here, Grail Knights, and then Knights of the Realm. And then they think they're being super, super sneaky over here by the Vanguard deploying two more Pegasus Knights in our backfield. Uh, so, I deployed over here because I saw that my ally deployed six mounted upgraded yeomen uh, up here. So I thought they wanted to get busy over there. So I was like, well, I better get close to that allies so those mounts yeoman don't die immediately um but then i see these little hex rays coming over and i'm like huh interesting all right well let's just do this so i'm going to oh, also i have a hammer of gork my bad i forgot to say i have a hammer of gork and the ally had or the enemy had a blessed for chip shane you see it on the screen you can see the big catapult icons you know what the hell they are uh, so we we're going to pull back because my ally is pulling back out of range of the blessed field trebuchet and i'm like oh <laughs> i feel a little bit exposed a little a little windy over here now uh, but anyway, I'm going to be focusing on these Hex Wraiths, who are over here thinking that they can hide? I, I don't know. So I'm going to get our super anti-cav squad over here, and they're just going to kind of go like, this way? And I'm going to be like, well, bloop. And so we just charge to the size of these Hex Wraiths. They have a lot of physical resistance, but this is a lot of, this is a lot of stuff. And then I'm going to cast, a, or uh, have a wall going on. So we get a bunch of hits, and we will eventually get through their... Uh, Hexy Wraithiness. Then I'm going to get these guys with the Orc Biggins who were on the flank here to support a cat fight. And then I'm going to just chase these people. And then the Pegasus Knight's going to come over here. Uh, meanwhile, my Goblobber is just destroying one of these Foot Squires, I think. Yeah, like this Foot Squire in the Battle Pilgrim. Then I hit something else over here, I think. Uh, but here, now I'm going to start pulling my forces back because my ally is pulling back even more. So I'm like, well, shit, I'm kind of just kind of left out here to dry, so I'm going to pull back my Goblob, or, or my Hammer of Gork. And then meanwhile, back over here, we were just finishing up the Hex Wraiths. These Hex Wraiths are getting killed by the Orc Biggins. My ally pulled their six upgraded mounted yeomen over here to assist me. Thank you. Um, and then we're going to get charged by the Pegasus Knights, which this is... This was already a bad idea. Don't make it a worse idea by charging in two Pegasus Knights into a situation where there are three Orc Boar Boy Vacants. Now, granted, we're not getting a charge, but I do. I am going to cast it. Here we go. And they are going to do some damage to us. Uh, but there, you are outnumbered here. We also got the Orc War Boss. I'm going to bring back the Orc Shaman. My uh, Hammer of Gork is now going to get into a better position as the enemy's cab is going to be flanking us over there. The Bretonian front line is getting pounded by the Hammer of Gork. And then the um, vampires are kind of slowly marching up here as well with the main attack damage crew back there. So the Vargeist and the Fellow Bats are going to march over here. We have dealt with the Hex Wraiths, and now we are dealing with the uh, Vegas is nice. We're going to shatter these. Because we had three Orc Boy Boy Vegans, an Orc War Boss, and an Orc Shaman back here against two normal Pegasus Knights. They weren't even Royal Pegasus Knights. So we're going to destroy those. 
I was going to give us support with our archers, but there was no need. Uh, so the six mounted upgraded yeomen are uh, going to be going over here towards this uh, enemy calf. And now my ally is going to march up a little bit. So I'm like, oh, this is this is the cue. Like, this is this is great. This is what we need to do. Because the vampire count is still back here, a distance away. So I'm like, oh, okay, my ally is going to march up. This is great. They're going to engage. I'm going to engage. We're going to crush this, this person. And then I'm just going to hold off the vampire counts with, like, a measly force over here. Also, these guys charge my orc boba biggins. Uh, or, sorry, my orc biggin, which is an anti-large unit. Um, so I don't know if you should do that with far guys. So I don't know if I would charge an orc biggin with a far guys unit. Uh, but they do, and now I'm going to pull back my uh, super squad over here to try and finish them off. We have killed the orc uh, or the Pegasus knights. My ally is going to get just, but this is this is not this is not a full engage, friends. This was a let's get our peasants in line so that they can hit the enemy's front line. I was like, oh, well, I'm already engaging here, so I guess I'll I'll take the Bretonian infantry. You can just sit back, and I guess I'll take the uh, vampire count infantry too, so that they don't you know slam into our flank. Over here, the Vargeist and the Felbats are going to pull back. They're going to escape my uh, squads. So that's okay. Going to get my archers over here. My hammer and cork is now back and hitting the peasant bowman line. So again, I am intercepting all of the Bretonian forces here because my allies just like, nah, I just want to sit here. I don't want to attack when my allies attacking even though we're like 20 feet apart. Okay, let's be fair. More like 50 feet apart. Uh, meanwhile, over here, they're going to send some men at arms, the Green Knight and Arbor de Borlo against these uh, enemy Cav, while the six fully upgraded mounted yeomen are just going to sit up there and watch and i have broken through the plutonian lines with our trolls our savage orcs and orc biggins now we're getting into the peasant bowmen one savage orc is holding off the hero squad as their line fights one measly battle pilgrim like why did he not even try to help me uh then over here we are again holding off the uh massive line of skeletal warriors with our gabos with the savage orcs i'm putting my giant over there more orc biggins we are withdrawing away from the skeletal spearmen i'm going to start pumping uh, arrows into these var guys the fell bats with our archer crew and they're going to send their six mounted upgraded yeomen in one single line against the pegasus knight don't do this just move around and, and surround them with your six yeomen instead of just you know one massive you know one long file of those things but i'm running off the Bretonians, and now i'm going to send most of my forces over here to fight against the vampire accounts and uh still my ally is just kind of hanging out they're just really kind of hanging out not really doing too much <laughs> except for just firing their bows i'm still running away from these uh, skeletal people and trying to get into the pegasus knights over here Giants killing some more uh, skeletal warriors, and this is when the Bretonian player is going to leave, and then the Vampire Count player leaves, and I didn't even have to fight their actual damage dealing, which is going to be the Double Blood Knights, the Var guy, the Var Wolf, um, and then Vlad and the White King, and some Grave Guard was still coming through. They probably weren't going to win as long as I at least position my army behind my allies' army, so they were forced to fight them. Uh, then I would kind of crash on the flanks, which is the plan, because I'm like, oh, you're not going to help me, are you? Um, so as long as we did that, we probably would have still won. Uh, the double blood knights would have been hard. My anti-calf squad was already vastly kind of depleted. And my allies' anti-calf squad, which they didn't really have one, uh, if you want to count the six upgraded mounted yeomen as an anti-calf squad, I guess you can't if they're not. Um, yeah, so they, they left the game a little early, but I don't, I don't, I don't think they would have won. The Bretonian player was all but dead, and then it was just going to be a 2v1, and, well, yeah. So, in terms of kills, we got a lot across the board. Uh, my ally... Well, I mean, that's what happens when you don't fight. Uh, Dark Legend Aru. Let's see. Their Pegasus Knights didn't fare that well. Blessed Foot Trebuchet did okay. Um, and their front line just got crushed by mine. And my Hammer of Gork. And then the Vampire Count, the only thing they even saw combat was their Skeletal Line. And these X-Rays, of course. Um, I guess the Blood Knights got a little action there against maybe my Orc Biggins on the on the flank, I think. So yeah, I, I, I'm giving this person a lot of shit because they decided to upgrade six Mounted Yeomen. Um, and I'm not going to apologize for that. So I hope you enjoyed the battle, and let's go watch a cinematic view. I will. Get in there, boys! These four x-rays, they're just trying to move. Oh, 
And then this group like splits in half and somehow still makes it all the way down the hill and not pull back into combat up at the top of the hill. So this unit is fighting two different battles against my Orc Boy Vigans and my Orc Vigans. I don't know how that's possible. Because usually the unit has to like consolidate itself when it gets too far away from itself. But I don't know how they did it. But my Orc uh, Vigans here are more than happy to kill them. So the reason I uh, chose the Greenskins is specifically because their anti-cav infantry is really good. Because the Orc Vigans and Savage Orc Vigans are really good. But they're also really good against normal infantry. Um, and since we were fa facing off against Plutonia and the Vampire Counts, whose real strength lies all in large creatures, either armored or unarmored, depending on you know, knights or you know, monsters. I was like, Greenskins, I think, are a perfect pick for this type of matchup. That's why I, uh, I did it. They're just pretty cost effective. Like, Orc Warboy Biggins have always been pretty cost effective anti armor large uh, cab. And Savage Orc Biggins are amazing. Orc, or Orc Biggins are also pretty good. These were Pegasus Knights. They were not supposed to be there. Like, don't, don't do that. And also, like, Orc Biggins kind of like to attack Var guys. Var guys are unarmored large creatures, so these guys do full damage against them. Now, I mean, the Var guys still do a lot of damage against the Orc Biggins as well. I guess it's a uh, they kind of cancel each other out a little bit. Almost caught him. Almost caught him. These Swiss Squires are about to get puked on. So I was going to send my giant over here, but then the enemy started to focus fire it down with the Peasant Bowman. So that's why I pulled it out. You can see that happened right there. I'm going to send it against the Vampire Counts. And the enemy did not reassign targets. So the Peasant Bowmen are actually going to walk into some of my army. So that was a win-win for me. Get puked on. Run, you filthy peasants! Get away! He's a. Uh... Skeletal Warriors unsupported against the Savage and Orc Vigan line. It's almost kind of a way, like, because they're not doing much. And the whole point is, in having a giant skeletal line, is so that you can keep the enemy's front line busy and um, while you take out their other key units, but, like, that's not happening. Or at the very least, you can keep them locked in so you can hammer an anvil with the Blood Knights. Uh, but instead, all of their actual damage creatures are against just one Orc Biggin, and I'm taking out all their fodder units. And without the fodder units, you know, these Blood Knights and stuff are going to have a harder time if the battle continues. See, the whole point of skeletal people are to keep units busy while your other damage units kill their key units. That's kind of the, the whole thing about these tar pit units, as I call them. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be a GG, and... Why six mounted? I, I, I was trying to think. I'm like, I guess just for funsies, I guess. But they like even fully upgraded. They're not good. The only thing they're really good at is maybe a casual rear charge on the infantry line. If not, then like the killing Bretonian archers, I guess. Like especially against vampire counts, I would not take mounted yeoman. 
Even in a 2v2 situation, like, don't even... Six! 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 Mountain Yeoman upgraded. What the fuck? Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I kind of wish I saw them in combat, but they didn't really have a chance to shine, you know? Maybe next time. Maybe I'll try. Maybe that's like a secret strat. Six fully upgraded mounts to Yeoman. And uh, maybe, yeah, I'll, I'll give that a shot. And I'll hate myself for it. Uh, but I'll see you all next time, everybody. Take care.